votes. Who are you expecting to enter the race? Well, I'm not sure exactly who's going to enter, but I think if you're Michael Bloomberg, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, or Michelle Obama, you're probably sitting there thinking, you know, I could take this field. Maybe I should get in. Maybe not. I think all four of them are possibilities. I think at this point, you either need broad recognition or, or really deep pocket finances. That was Mark Penn predicting Michael Bloomberg will enter the 2020 presidential race. That was last month. He's been saying that a couple of times in several uh, months recently. Bloomberg is expected to file paperwork to get on the Democratic primary ballot in Alabama today. That is the breaking news this morning. Joining us right now is the former senior advisor to the Clintons, MDC Partner CEO and Stagwell Group President, Managing Partner, Mark Penn. Mark, great to see you. Thanks so much. Good morning. You were right. You, you predicted this a long time ago. Congrats. You, you made that call. First, he's got to get through the primaries. So how do you see the field here accepting Michael Bloomberg? Will he be able to take on Elizabeth Warren, who's been rising as much as she has, and Joe Biden, who's been in the number one spot? Well, I, I think that what you've seen in the last couple of weeks is a little bit of weakness on the part of Joe Biden. And, and I think Elizabeth Warren created an opening with her health care plan that with a fifty two trillion dollar price tag and i think i think that created a pretty sensible decision by michael bloomberg maybe i should get in now given the field and how it's developing he'll start out with i think about six or seven percent he comes in as a uh... social progressive but an economic moderate and the question will be can he catch on i don't think it's a sure thing but I think given his age and position, this probably was his remaining opportunity to run for president. And he's taken it. So what's the likelihood that he's the nominating, uh, he, he's nominated as their, as their candidate on the, uh, to go up against Donald Trump? Well, look, I think in this field now, we could well have a uh, convention where nobody has a majority going into it. Uh, I, you know, I'd hate to handicap him before he's even launched, because I think his launch is going to be important. He's going to have to figure out how to get into some debates before they're over. You know, he'll come with a little bit of a disadvantage, not in Iowa, maybe not in New Hampshire, although filing deadline for New Hampshire is a couple of days away. And by the way, Hillary Clinton has a couple of days left here to make her <laughs> final decision. Mark, hi, James Freeman here at the Wall Street Journal. You mentioned the uh, possible uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, health plan issue drawing uh, Bloomberg into the race. I was interested in this recent Navigator poll showing that only 25 percent of Democrats realize that the Bernie Warren care plan doesn't allow them to have private health insurance. Uh, is that number going to get closer to 100 percent as we get through this process? And, and are we should we expect a big decline from both of them? Uh, I think there's no doubt that as people learn that Medicare for all means no private health care for all, uh, that that uh, enthusiasm for that concept will fade. And rather than amend it, you know, in some way that would have made it acceptable, I think Warren here kind of went right into uh, a public opinion here that I think would be quite hostile to, to the concept. And you're exactly right. I think the more they learn about, the more she's going to have problems. And uh, I think that created an opening here for the moderates in the Democratic Party to come back uh, and say, hey, if you want to win, we need a strong candidate with experience and we need somebody with sensible plans. Mark, a question. We've seen some people leaving the race. Better O'Rourke obviously is out and some others. It's been rumored that Kamala Harris might be uh, dwindling, funds might be dwindling, that she might be poised to exit. Do you think Mike Bloomberg coming into the race pushes some of these other candidates who are not really very secure in their funding and following out of the race? Uh, I think if a candidate doesn't have a strong foothold by now in either Iowa or New Hampshire, they're going to have problems really continuing in this race. And, and I think Kamala Harris so far hasn't been able to establish that, whereas Mayor Pete is pretty strong in yeah. Iowa. So it suggests that he'll be able to stay in and hope for a good performance there. Uh, Mark, quick question. Uh, Deirdre here. You said that if Michael Bloomberg is able to master the debates once he's into them, and even President Trump's critics say he's amazing on camera, he knows how to command an audience. How important is that in this day and age, Twitter, whatever else you want to talk about? And is Michael Bloomberg up to the task? Uh, I think he's definitely up to the task. Look, look, there's getting in, and then there's catching on with some momentum. So I think he's going to get in. 
I think he's going to spend considerable resources here. He has in his mayoral races. He's not been shy uh, about spending. I think he has a powerful biography, having risen up from the middle class. And he has some serious accomplishments. You know, having said that, uh, he's going to have to connect with Democratic primary voters nationally, something he hasn't done yet. That means he's fresh. People will give him a look. But that doesn't mean he's a short thing by any means. What about this wealth tax debate? Let's talk about this. Democrats in Congress are crafting alternative ideas to Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax plan amid growing concerns that her soak the rich strategy won't pass, even if the party captures both chambers of Congress in 2020. Tell me about that wealth tax and whether or not that's actually end up hurting her. Well, I don't know whether in the Democratic primary the wealth tax will hurt or not. Obviously, the, the number one jab here against Bloomberg will, uh, ah, a billionaire. We don't need another billionaire class. And I think you'll see an emergence of more class warfare here. I mean, I think you definitely have a left of the party uh, bringing back class warfare, and Bloomberg will be targeted with that, and there'll be a debate about it. I don't think there's a lot of national sentiment for a wealth tax yeah. uh, in particular. I think that, that most people want a strong economy, jobs, rising wages, and they want anyone who can deliver that. So that's what we've got, right? We, we, we've got unemployment at a 50-year uh, low. We've got a consumer that continues showing real strength, economy that is growing. What will Bloomberg's policies be? What is he going to run on, given the fact that all that you just said, what America wants, uh, President Trump has delivered? Well, I, I think that actually if you're Bloomberg, you say, look, I can deliver the kind of economic strength that we need, the kind of toughness and foreign policy that we need, and yet I won't uh, create all of, the, all of the upheaval and division in society. I'll, I'll bring society together, and I'll be more progressive on issues like climate change, on gun safety, uh, and on immigration. Mm. And I think that that's a formula that could be powerful if he gets off the ground. All right, Mark. Thanks so much. Great to talk with you, as always. Mark Penn, good to see you, sir.